Hey there, thanks for stopping by in this video. I'm gonna show you guys how to install a washer box that is recessed back in the wall. And the specific one we're using today is this Ox box. This one's designed to work with PEX, but they make several other variants that connect to different types of pipe. So I will link to all the different ones in the description. One of the first questions you're gonna have is how high should I mount my aux box? And right away I'm just gonna say mount it at 40 inches to the inlet right here and you're gonna be good to go. 39 is the minimum height for some washing machines or the recommended height and then some of them are also closer to 30 inches so maybe a little bit lower but if you go with 40 then you're going to be fine you're going to be above that 39 inch minimum because you never know what brand of washing machine is going to be installed in the future going with a little bit higher is better in my opinion now you can install these things all the way up to 96 inches for most washing machines are capable of pumping up a little bit higher but unless you have some kind of a weird situation i would definitely avoid doing that and just put it at more of a standard height. Speaking of standard heights, 42 inches is something that I've seen pretty commonly for the height of the sandpipe. So if you want to just go with 42 and bump it up a tiny bit more, that's not a bad option either. But 40 is what we're doing today. Now real quickly, let me explain the different components that we have as far as our drain waste and vent. You can see right here, this portion coming down into this trap, that is called the standpipe. The standpipe goes down into the trap which is what prevents sewer gas from coming up and out of our standpipe 24 seven. If you were to connect this thing straight to the drain with no trap, you would have major sewer gas problems. So the standpipe comes down into the trap. And while we're talking about that, the length of this standpipe can be anywhere from 18 inches to 30 inches for the UPC, but for the IPC, it can be anywhere from 18 to 42 inches. So just keep that in mind. If you go with 18 to 30, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. In our case, I think we ended up with 23 inches as the height of that pipe. We'll take just a minute and let's go through the process of gluing our trap together really quick so you can kind of see how the glue up goes. So with gluing these fittings together, it's just a matter of priming and gluing them and sticking them together, holding them there for a few seconds. That's pretty much all you gotta do. So just make sure that the fitting is primed really good. The reason we prime is it actually prepares the PVC material to kind of weld to the other fitting. It just kind of softens the uh, outer layer of the PVC and makes for a much better connection than if we just skipped it all together. Now it works out really well with our trap putting this on last because we can connect our two sections of pipe together just like so, and it's really nice and easy. I've already measured and angled everything correctly so that we will have the proper slope and everything should glue up quite nicely. One, two, three, four. Now we just push them on here. You need to make sure that it's the right angle so that it holds it just nice and flush right here and inside the wall cavity. Just kind of push this across here, make sure that's going to sit nicely. It looks like it's good. It'll be just fine. Let's see how close we got with our measurement. Oh, right on the money. So that's good to go. Now going down from there across this way, this is called our trap arm. Now this trap arm distance is limited to five feet with two inch pipe. So keep that in mind if we, for some reason, had this drain further out over here, uh, you can go up to five feet before it actually dumps down into your drain and then has your vent coming up. And that brings us to talking about our vent. And the vent starts right above the drain where this T is right here. Now you could use a two inch by two inch by inch and a half T, but we just used a two by inch and a half bushing to glue into there. And then our vent comes up from there and goes over to the rest of our venting system, which we'll take a quick look at in just a second. The most important things to remember with your vent are that you cannot offset it horizontally until you get six inches above the flood rim 
of the standpipe right here. So six inches above here, that's where we can then take our vent pipe and 90 it horizontal, which you can see we've done that, but it's a good, I don't know, couple feet higher than the flood rim of our inlet right over there. Same thing applies to like sinks and other appliances that need to be vented. You go six inches above the flood rim of the fixture. Now, just so you know, a 45 is considered to be vertical. So if for some reason we needed to offset this right here, we could go at a 45 like this, and that would still be considered to be vertical, just that you can't go fully sideways past that 45 degrees until you are six inches above the floodplain. Now, just for fun, we'll follow our vent over here a little bit. Right here is a lavatory or a sink. The water runs in right there, drain goes down, vent comes up. You can see those two lines are teeing together from the washing machine standpipe over there and this sink, that's totally fine. Comes over here, catches one more inch and a half vent that tees in, and then it goes over to our main stack, which goes up and out. Now, as you can see, our drain comes over, goes down through the floor, and connects to the rest of the drain waste and vent drainage system downstairs. And that leads me to one really important point is that make sure you understand what is a vent and what is a drain because downstairs we have lots of different pipes that are in the wall, some of which may look like good options to connect to for a drain. However, if you connect to a vent and use it as a drain, you're gonna create major problems or possibly could create major problems with siphoning out traps in different fixtures and causing sewer gas issues. Again, that is the whole reason for venting or one of the primary reasons for venting is you wanna prevent sewer gas from coming into the thermal envelope. So you need to take this seriously. Don't just be like, oh, well, it's a pipe. It goes to the drain somehow eventually. Make sure you're connecting it to an actual drain and not to a vent. One more thing I will mention right down here is that this trap needs to be at least six inches off the floor. Now in the wall, I'm not really sure if that applies, but if you have an external sandpipe, that minimum of six inches to the bottom of the trap applies and a maximum of 16 inches if I'm not mistaken. Finally, that brings us to our water lines. You can see we've got a blue and a red. You can probably guess that the blue is cold, the red is hot. The hot line always goes on the left. So you can see we've got those coming up right here. We got those crimped into place and ready to go so that we can make our connections to our washing machine. Not much else to say on that, except to make sure you connect your lines to a place in the plumbing system where you're not gonna create too much demand on the pipes that are existing. Uh, so if you need to, you can run a line back to wherever your water source is in order to avoid doing that. Otherwise, just try to connect it to like a three quarter inch line or something. Uh, if you piggyback too many half inch lines together, you may run into issues where if the washing machine is filling, you might notice a slight lack of pressure or loss of pressure a little bit at your sink or something like that. Most likely a washing machine, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. They draw some water and then they stop. Most of the time they're not drawing water. So probably not that big of a deal, but just keep it in mind. So real quick, we'll throw this time lapse in here showing me assembling these fittings. Uh, we're just taking our time with priming each fitting properly and gluing each fitting and getting them all pushed together properly, double checking our lengths, making sure that things are level and making sure that things are pitched properly. With all residential plumbing indoors, you're gonna be looking at a quarter inch per foot for your fall that you're gonna wanna have. So on this pipe right here, quarter inch per foot is what we're shooting for. And in an easy way, when you're like, going a longer distance. You can just measure how long the distance is that you're going to be running your pipe and every four feet you're going to drop one inch. So you can do the math really quick because between there and there is eight feet. So in that span right there we drop two inches. One more thing with the venting is that you want to slope all of your vents back towards the fixture that they're serving. So this slopes back to here and goes down, slopes back over to here and goes down and you run your fittings accordingly. So you can see this, This uh, if you imagine that water somehow got in here, it would be going back down, down the drain, down the sink drain right there. Same thing over here, going up into our main stack. You can see we actually have the direction going up this direction because it's pulling air from outside and that's how the air is gonna flow down to each fixture that is vented. Would it work if you flipped it the other way and the direction was the other way around? Honestly, yes, it would work just fine, but it's one of the ways that you can help yourself know what's a drain and what's a vent 
based on the way the fittings are flowing back to the main stack. Another cool thing about the aux box is that you can actually separate these halves and position them differently. We can make it so that the water lines are on the right and the drain is on the left, or if one wants to be up above the other one, that's all doable. So these are very configurable. I like to leave them in the standard configuration if at all possible, maybe flip them left to right, but I like them being side by side. Uh, definitely my preference. There's also a trim piece that we'll be able to throw on here after the drywall is done. They, you know, put your drywall up and they'll cut this box out on both sides and then you put this trim on and it will look absolutely great. This little plastic piece right here, you just get a hold of it with the pliers and you kind of bend it back and forth until it snaps out. So really easy to set it up once you're ready, but there's a cap that's in there for now so that you don't end up with debris and stuff falling down into the drainage system. As you can see right here, we have an externally mounted standpipe with separate hot and cold water valves right here. I actually really like this style if you have more of a utility area where you're not worried about how it looks as much. I think this is a little bit nicer from a utility standpoint because you can easily service these valves if you need to and everything's just a little bit easier to get to and see and maintain if necessary. This standpipe is also about 40 inches to the top and these are also about 40 inches and uh, one thing with that is that if you look at the height of this washing machine here, you can see that you're actually not gonna see your valves and your standpipe very much at all, which is another reason why I like that height. But at the same time, it's not so low that you're having to reach down very far. It's definitely gonna be easy to get to these connections. This uses the exact same components with a two inch glue trap. Note that they do have a threaded trap that you can also use that you can pull apart and maintain if you need to. One thing I always recommend if you're gonna use a glue trap is to leave enough distance right here between the wall and our fitting that we could cut this off one time and still attach a brand new trap to it if we needed to. So leaving a little bit of extra pipe there uh, is intentional for that exact reason. And right here is an example of all the different pipes that you have to sort out to figure out what's a vent and what is a drain. All of these right here are vents, but that's a drain and that's a drain right over there. So you wanna make sure that you connect into the right thing. Now where that standpipe is draining into is actually below where there are two sinks. There's a sink right here and a sink right on the other side of the wall. So it's really important that we tied in down below those so that we were actually tying into the drain and not into the vent right up there. Now you may have noticed that these back-to-back -back sinks are technically a little bit separated. So this portion right here between this drain and this drain is what would be known as a wet vent. And we are basically venting uh, both fixtures with a single vent right up here but that's permissible under the use case because the volume of water and the distance here is not very great. So this installation is perfectly fine. Right here's another example. There's a drain for a shower that's gonna be coming over and coming down, but right next to it, there's a vent that's venting that standpipe on the other side of the wall that we just looked at. And this is venting the sink. So all those vents tying together, going up. Hopefully that told you everything that you need to know in order to install a recessed washer outlet box. So if this video was helpful to you, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe down below for more videos like this one. I'll put a couple videos here on the screen for you guys to choose from if you wanna keep learning with me and we'll see you over there in a few seconds. See ya.